Hello, 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 magical humans. Um, I'm super excited to tune in in another Tea with Tamara today on this Thursday and allow the Spirit's messages to flow through me as a catalyst for information that, you know, is kind of valuable and important for us all to hear, including myself. And so oftentimes what happens is I get a transmission that they say, this is what you're going to speak about today, even if it's uncomfortable. And this is, I think, what is really important to understand about spirit communication is that when you're tapped and tuned in and listening and being in the agreement that when you are in a contract with spirit as a mentor, as a guide, as a truth bomb teller, that oftentimes you get the information that says, do this, say this create this and of course it's going to fucking feel uncomfortable because it's asking you to go into an unknown space in your creative self that it doesn't exist you don't have proof of it in existence at all and i mean that has happened in in many avenues and aspects of my business in creating a trauma release program at one point or when i could read chakras and when they told me i was going to be a business coach i mean like there was so many times where spirit would drop a bomb and i'd be like what you're talking about spirit? You want me to, mm -mm, I was not expecting that, right? And, but there comes and there forms a relationship that the more I'm tuned and tapped in and listening to what spirit has to say, the more my life opens and expands to possibilities and potentialities. So it's kind of like a, out of everything and everyone I've ever had a relationship with, spirit never fails to guide me into the next expand itself, no matter how much you resist. And the key here is that resistance always leads us to an expansion. It wouldn't be there. Your ego wouldn't be having a fit if there wasn't some form of uh, new self on the other side. If your ego was like, yes, you should do this. I'd be like, well, that does not, mm -mm. if my ego is in agreement with this, then I don't know if it's like really that helpful to me in the long run. So I'm in the shower this morning and this is what they wanted me to talk about. Two uh, spiritual laws being the law of attraction and the law of polarity. And they want me to begin to talk to you guys about money. And I was like, okay, so I did an email a couple of weeks ago about money as medicine, right? Money as a catalyst for transformation because ultimately money is just energy. And it's a catalytic force of energy. Oftentimes we need something bigger than what is known again in order to have uh, enough contrast to move through or move past what currently is our state in which we are. And so money tends to be a really powerful tool. It becomes a tool for you, not money controlling you, but you controlling money from a very powerful perspective as you seeing it as a tool for yourself to move through things. And so, this was a, a thing about money as medicine. It's like, you know, oftentimes all it takes is the acknowledgement that you're willing to do something with money that can create this movement or this shift. And it could be as simple as, yo, I don't look at my, my bills every month. I don't open my bills. And so you make that your first step in, in creating this catalytic form of charge in your body that creates change. And it could be that you, you know, get an accountant and you start looking at your numbers in your business and that's enough of a catalytic change. Hello, Holly. And then it could be that you hire a coach, right? And that one becomes a catalytic change uh, because there is never a time where we have the money for coaches. Uh, my coach did a video on this and I was like, damn, that is so true. You know what I mean? Like, it was not like we have bank accounts that say, this is for your coaching and, you know, business growth. And then we go, oh, thank goodness, this money is set aside. I mean, it goes this way for even having children, right? Like, I'm going to wait to have children. I'm going to wait to do this thing until I have money. Money is never there. Until, like, it is there. And this is what we're going to get to with the law of polarity today. So where money is concerned and where these two laws stand in importance to money. So that we're going to talk about the law of attraction first. And then we're going to talk about the law of polarity. Because the thing is, is that as soon as we're born, we are given somebody else's beliefs and patterns and experiences with money and we adopt them as our own. We all have our fucking first money story and I don't even want to talk about it. Like what your mama taught you, taught you what your daddy taught you and like how they're still somehow like up in our grills in our lives in some way or some form and untangling those. So that exists. Absolutely. But even bigger than this is this understanding that spiritual law and our connection to spirit trumps every other energy out there, including the ones that we have created in these first seven years of our existence. And so the law of attraction gets a bad rap because you cannot in the law of attraction in any way doubt your desire. 
And I think this is where people don't understand the specificity of visualization and of being absolutely relentless in your dream, regardless of what your reality looks like. And so we are so visual as humans that we look around and we're like, well, it's, it's not in my bank account. And it's not in my thing. So therefore, uh, the law of attraction is lying because I fucking meditate and I fucking journal and I do everything the law of attraction says to bring money. I watched the secret. You know what I mean? Like I did these things and yet money isn't coming to me. Of course, it's not fucking coming to you, right? Because that's not the way that the law of attraction is actually working as an energetic force. You claim a result. You claim that result even when you don't see it in your visual at that timeline. It already exists in your field. First and foremost, if you desire something, it already exists for you in some other realm or in, in the formless substance. Because every single one of us watching this video, even me, have a different desire. So of course it's not a universal desire and it's specific to you as opposed to being everybody wants the same thing. We don't want the fucking same thing, <laughs> right? So you have this desire. And the thing is that you are relentlessly connected to it, period, exclamation. Never once does your belief or trust in its existence waver. That is the true essence of the law of attraction. If you're like, I want this thing, but I look at my bank account and I don't see it, so I don't think it's real, or I'm not good enough, or I don't believe it's there, or whatever external factor gets in your head to tell you that this is not your reality, the minute you leave that vision, the law of attraction stops, right? So the law of attraction is this impactful, powerful force of nature when you claim it in yourself, in your energy. If you're wishy-washy and you're saying, oh yeah, but only some days I really want it. And some days I'm just in like, whatever. You can't do that. Can't do that. So you have to be all fucking in so that the universe can be all fucking in. And it doesn't matter what's happening around you because you know it's true. So let's get really clear on that one. That's how the law of attraction works. And most of us think that we, if we wish it into existence, it would be. I watched a Matt Kahn video and it was the best. Cause he's like, yeah. Cause if that were the case, then everybody would be like, Oh, I want a new shirt. Ding! And the shirt would appear. It'd be like, I dream of genie. How do you stay relentless? Holly is asking in the comments. You stay relentless because the deserving and the worth of that desire, because you have this connection to it being yours, right? So like, think about uh, being a kid and wanting that doll, right? And, or the unicorn or the whatever it is, a bike. And you put so much thought and energy into that. It wasn't until you opened Christmas and you didn't get it that you believed that it wasn't possible. So the idea here is you take that same energy of desire and it becomes your, like for me, Holly, how I stay absolutely committed to these things is I read them every fucking day. Like, I'm not kidding. When you guys are like, you know, what is it? Like the minute you let it out of your mind, you have forgotten you have forgotten. You've allowed yourself to get distracted. So I have my intentions set out you, that, you know, the vision boards exist. These are helps. These are tools for you to support you in staying absolutely focused on the vision period. Right. And so yours could be something different than mine, but absolutely every single day, right? Because, okay. What if you waver a bit due to an old thought pattern, but then get back onto course? Absolutely. That tends to be our, our, um, truth. And the thing is, is how fast can I get through the process of getting back on track, which is a claiming of the whatever emotion or material or data, because you can still have this unrelenting desire and see this as data, not seeing it as taking you off the path at all, actually, because you are so driven to this outcome, because you are so honestly like ready for whatever the universe has placed into your field. You're like, Ooh, okay, great. So I'm charged or I've gotten triggered or so, like this story that every time I do something in my business, uh, the car breaks down or some bill comes in or I have to fix the, the roof, right? What shifts is your perspective on this, that as soon as the material comes up, it doesn't take you from your vision. It doesn't stop you from your desire. What's happening is you're saying, Oh my God, thank you. Thank you for bringing this pattern up 
for me to witness it as being something that has been in my energy body or in my system or in my field that has made it so this has felt difficult. Wow, without this information, right? Without this information, it would still keep creating a, a roadblock or a detour from what it is that I desire. So you don't see it as taking yourself off the path at all else. And you see it as simply you're driving down the road and you see a stick. The, the GPS is still set to the same destination, but you just move the stick and you keep driving as opposed to seeing it as, oh, I'm, there's a stick. Now I'm going to take this left hand turn and this right hand turn and I'm going to go all the way around to get back on the path. Just get in there and remove the obstacle. But the idea is that you still hold that vision in whatever form or way, in the visualization, in the repeating of reading the things, you know, of, uh, you know, having the vision boards, having the energy maps, having whatever it is that is important to you, period. Unrelenting. And this means, and this is a big one, and we might not get to the law of polarity today, uh, because it's also a huge, powerful law. It also means that you have to be willing to claim a desire big enough to do this experience with. And I have had so many sales calls lately where it, it, there's a fear in wanting, you guys. There's a fear in wanting more, right? It seems selfish. It seems overwhelming. It seems like it's going to be hard. It feels like you know, that you're going to lose time with your kids or your partners or whatever it is that the ego is telling you as being this, I don't know, this grungy, dirty part of wanting and desiring and dreaming. And it's just like, oh, look at all of this disgust I have on wanting things or feeling and oftentimes it is this sense of, of being deserving and worthy of that more, of the house on the lake, of going into first class all the time, of, you know, and they're telling me to tell you guys this. Another part of this visualizing and being in the field of your desire is being willing to shift how you would experience your life. And this is an, a really big one on the emotional attachment to that desire as well, is that like, say you want to have a million dollars in your business. And, you know, that's just maybe you want to take home a million dollars in your business and you want a multiple million dollar business. Maybe you want to help, um, you know, a thousand clients in a year. Maybe you want to have multi six figure launches, whatever it is that the desire is for you. Right. The piece that makes it real and that you can even connect with it more fully is that you need to realize that your current life, the way that it is in its current state and reality has to shift or change in order for that money to be the vibrational match of you. So when you're in that idea of thinking about what having that wealth or that relationship or that experience or that whatever it is that's your massive goal, you have to be willing to shift into the discomfort of looking at, so say you're like, okay, well, if I'm that person, then I am only traveling first class. I'm staying in five star hotels and you begin to create uh, visuals of what that money being in your life is affecting, is affecting, right? If you are constantly thinking about grabbing the greatest sale, if you're constantly thinking about, you know, getting the best deals of doing these kinds of things, uh, it, t it tends to take you away from the vibrational match of your desire. Um, and so you have to be willing to be, to be in the mindset that you are already achieving those things or having those things and seeing them as real as well. So there is a catalytic place to make that go faster that you, you know, hire a housekeeper or that you're doing, you know, you are going on vacations. What changes in your life when these things exist, when that ultimate dream? So ultimately in the law of attraction you have to be willing to have a desire or want or goal that is big enough that it feels fucking uncomfortable fucking uncomfortable <laughs> if you're like i just will be happy if i you know xyz totally and you can do this by the way you can just be like if i can just get to this i'll be good and you will be able to get to that and it will feel very comfortable and it will feel like, you know what I mean? Achievable and all those kinds of things. And these are things that you do set to get to here.
right? But ultimately the law of attraction, because that's what we're talking about, the law of attraction is bigger than this. It's bigger than the safety of not having to get into a state of contrast or getting in an argument with your ego. Because if you're not willing to challenge your ego, because your ego is a delight, you gotta love your ego. Your ego's been around and created these protections and these safeties to keep you safe. And it is the gratitude I have for my ego, even when I don't agree with my ego, because it has literally kept me from drowning, from being in bad spaces, from, you know what I mean, toxic relationships. I mean, like my ego has been a godsend many times in my life. And I can witness what my ego has to say and actually see what my ego's saying and going like, oh, that's what you're saying? Ah, <laughs> then I want that discomfort of coming up against you and saying, I'm so grateful you feel this way for whatever reason. And my dream is bigger than that. My desire is bigger than that. So first claim, 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 claim a bigger desire. If you want this, if you want this, it's not for everybody. Being an entrepreneur or having a big dream is not for the faint of heart because there will be many external factors along the way that will try to pull you off this path to create proof of you not having it. So of course there's going to be discomforts. So you need to claim that dream or that desire or that want, period, and be relentless in the understanding that it exists for you. Nobody else has to fucking care if it exists for you. Because if you're looking for somebody else to agree with your dream desire, if it's not a coach or somebody that can hold that space for you, then you're already setting yourself up for disaster, right? If you're placing your dream in somebody else's lap as becoming something that you create, mm -mm, mm -mm. so you claim that desire, you claim it for yourself, you claim that reality in all the ways that it will shift, change your life in, in whatever form and way that it is. And you do the work every single day to stay connected to that. So I can even tell you I have, oh, I should actually, that, I don't even know if you can see that waste, white paper on the floor. Ooh, look at him trying to find it. That's, that's my, my new moon ritual. Those become my monthly desires, period. I, I have on my book where I actually keep my client notes is because I was moving and I couldn't have my vision board in front of me. I had photocopied my vision board and placed it in the plastic part of my notebook for my clients. In my journal, I do weekly intentions, right? To even go from my monthly to my weekly. And I read them every fucking day, every day. <laughs> and even when somebody's like, oh, Tamara, that's like, how are you going to make that happen? I don't, I don't know. It's just going to happen. I don't need to know the how. I show up every fucking day. I do what it is that is my inspired action every fucking day. I move the needle every fucking day knowing fully that this exists for me, period, exclamation mark. Period, exclamation mark. And I never think that this is going to happen without my partnership with spirit. Meaning that I don't think that just because I want something, it is magically going to fucking fall in my lap. Again, what kind of world would we live in? It would be an I dream of genie world. If we were like, I would like a serious, I'm obsessed with serious coffee here on Vancouver Island because it's a Vancouver Island owned coffee shop and they make stone ground London fogs. I've talked to you about this, which are like hand like formed, broken down in India and shipped to the island. And this is the most delicious thing. And I could be like, there is my drink in front of me. We cannot believe that spirit's just going to drop things in our lap. But if we have the desire that is strong enough and we understand we're in a business partnership with our desire, and that means that we take as much action as spirit is, and it doesn't have to be fucking hard because the minute you realize it exists and the action that you are taking is already prescripted and guided by God. And that's a big one. That's a big one. 
And that's where you tap into intuition to making it fucking easier. I got fired up today. And this is a long video. <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about the law of polarity today because I think that this is a big enough biteable piece of material to sink into, to sink into. And you better believe that I have a coach that holds that vision for me. So when I get into that place where I see a fucking stick on the path and there is going to be a part of my ego that tells me you're going to have to turn the car around. That's a big stick. Or I get like into a place where I want to take a detour. I got somebody who's like, no fucking way. You and I have, like you have hired me to hold this fucking vision with you. And now we're going to do it. So for me, it's not just about reading these every single day. It's having another human who just simply holds that vision for me, with me, and never lets me off the detour. Which, of course, I would love to be for you. There is a one-on-one -on -one spot available right now. And if that is something that you know is resonant for you in the claiming of this, let's connect because this is the most important piece of the law of attraction and supporting you on that GPS guided fucking the most fun ever. And that is today's Tea with Tamara. May you have a blessed day. I'm excited if you guys start throwing in what you did with this video and this information. Did you reach out to connect with me? Did you create your intentions? Did you make a vision board? Have you visualized? What was it that had you tingle in all the right ways? Have a magical day.